Good evening and welcome to the rest of the news. We have a tremendous program for you today and our special guest is Matt Singleton. Hey everybody, how's it going? Tell us what you're up to these days. Well, basically, uh, I'm still operating from my website, www.biblesmack.net. And uh, I've been involved with a lot uh, over the years of uh, political stuff and also apologetics. And um, I'm going to be talking today about like a little bit of a mixture of the two, dealing with the school system of Common Core. And basically, we'll be talking about um, Common Core, you know, it... Uh, doesn't, you know, we, we always talked about reading, writing, and arithmetic. Right, you know, that, That's right. what we always wanted out of school. But, you know, uh, when it comes to the arithmetic, they've got the fuzzy math. And when it comes to the writing, they don't, uh, you know, tell kids how to write in cursive anymore. And, um, you know, as far as the reading, you know, I, I'd be scared with all the LOLs and SMHs about that. <laughs> but uh, essentially, um, I'm looking at it from the level of, now that they've kind of dumbed our audience down, what is it that they're putting in to replace it? And essentially, uh, when we look at the way that the Common Core is fashioned now, these aren't just political issues that don't need to be in school. They're actually kind of religious. Yeah. And um, the theory of cosmology, cosmology deals with a lot of science, but it's really a religious philosophical category. And uh, there's lots of cosmologies out there. I've even got my own theory. But uh, the Big Bang Theory is really a religious idea. And so I want to talk about that and why it's, it should not be in our public school system just as much as we are not supposed to have creation science or intelligent design or other theories allowed. You know, let's be fair about because this. Because it's a religious concept. Yes, it's a very religious concept. Um, the first introduction of an idea like a Big Bang Theory came out of uh, the Hindu religion. And uh, basically, they... Um, now, of course, Hinduism's got about 620 million gods, so there's lots of different myths. But uh, this one involved a cosmic egg that created everything in the universe and created all the gods. And then uh, they would have these revolutions and cycles of reincarnation that boiled out to several billion years of history, okay? It wasn't history, it was mythology, but they believed that the Earth was billions of years old, okay? And that was in mythology. Well, in the modern era, uh, around the 1800s, um, there was a mathematician and a uh, Roman Catholic uh, priest of the Jesuit order. His name was George Lemaitre. He came up with this Big Bang Theory, and I think, I'm going to speculate, I think he probably did know what that myth was because they both said the words cosmic egg, okay? But uh, essentially, when they uh, started to uh, develop this theory of the universe, um, there's a lot of religious implications. Now, our country, when we have our law system, we look at things as innocent until proven guilty. So, uh, we didn't start off uh, going after evolution and the Big Bang Theory uh, as far as th that way. Now, of course, we remember the Scopes trial, which was a, a state law that said they did not want evolution being taught in their school system. Okay, And um, the uh, people arguing for evolution lost that case, not because of what's right or wrong. That's not the court's job. But they lost that case because um, the, the state law was simple and they broke it. Yeah. So um, then when we fast forward, we heard of something in 1982. It was out in Arkansas. It was called um, the Arkansas uh, Creation Trial. And basically, um, I started studying that. And I'm looking at the memorandum, which is where the judge gives his philosophy for his court decisions. And in this court decision, he outlawed uh, creation science. And uh, here's... Here's what it was. It was Judge William Overton. And he said that uh, basically creation science um, may use scientific evidence and stuff, but it wasn't true science because of four different points. And one of those points I want to bring out today, it's called the sudden creation of the universe, energy and life from nothing. And he says here that both concepts and wording of Section 4A convey an Inescapable religiosity, section 4A1, describes the sudden creation of the universe, energy, and life from nothing. 
Okay. And uh, the Big Bang Theory, um, it's not stayed the same. It's altered itself over the years. But um, there is a part of the Big Bang Theory called cosmic infl inflation, where um, the universe uh, starts from that uh, singularity, that cosmic egg, and then it expands after one second. It's there for one second, and then it expands uh, within another section, second and basically becomes 99% of the universe. It actually breaks the speed of light, which is kind of interesting because we're not just talking about planets or stars. We're talking about space, okay? Even when I do that, I'm doing it in the middle of a gas, but we're talking about space. And all of that went faster than the speed of light, okay, and, and popped out from nothing, okay? So, um... Basically, if you look at that, it seems like it's the same thing that the Big Bang Theory proposes. And um, the, the same theory you said was uh, not scientific because everything came suddenly from nothing. Yeah. The doctrine of creation mm -hmm. did the same thing as the doctrine of the Big Bang Theory. Right. So if creation gets illegalized, shouldn't the same thing happen to uh, the Big Bang Theory? Right. And... Right. Um, there is a famous philosopher, Lawrence Krauss. He wrote a book called The Universe from Nothing. And uh, we'll, we'll show that quote a little later. But uh, basically, he says uh, that this universe, what could be so amazing, he says that it could result literally from nothing by natural processes. Now, here's something that you have to understand when we talk about the Big Bang Theory in science. He said that it was natural processes that created the Big Bang. So you have laws of science that create the Big Bang out of a universe of nothing. But what made the laws of science? And now many people would argue either from a Christian perspective or just believing in a God of some type that God would make those laws. But remember, we're dealing in the public school with science. Now, when this stuff happens, I mean, light was supposed to be a universal constant, but yet the cosmic inflation breaks the speed of light. And then you think of the law of gravity. If all of the mass of all the universe was down to that little pinhole, that little singularity. The egg. Yeah. Wouldn't all the weight of the universe be contracted in? Yeah. So then what would force all of that to come out so powerfully. And then we think about stars. That's the first thing we think about forming is stars, and they say that stars are formed out of the gas clouds. Well, out in outer space, they have these clouds of gas, and it's absolutely cold there, usually about negative 300 degrees Celsius. So um, when you do this, in order to have fusion, you would heat things up, right? Well, if you look at Boyle's gas law, whenever gas is heated, it expands. So if we got fusion going, it would be really, 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 really super hot. So then what would happen to that gas? It would expand at a very quick and massive rate. So it wouldn't come together to form a star. Yeah, it would be going out so far it wouldn't have the gravity to come in. Now, let me tell you what I get out of the Big Bang Theory. Okay. The Big Bang Theory says, in the beginning, there was nothing, and then nothing exploded and formed everything. That doesn't really make sense, does it? No, it, you know, it's nothing does nothing. That's right. Yeah. So the Big Bang Theory is not much of an explanation for anything. Well, and, and the problem is, is that we kind of like... When we talk about knowledge and stuff like that, you have to understand what a thing is. And the Big Bang was not something that anyone ever observed, obviously. Right, okay? right. So if, it, if it's not, then it's an idea. Right. But then you have to say, okay, well, I'm going to invent another idea to make this idea. And before you know it, it's one idea into another and another and another and another. Uh, a lot of these things they call... And you don't know the first one was true. Yeah. And a lot of these things they call fudge factors. And there's a lot of, like, the universe that fits in this category is, well, it's mathematically there, okay, but math is just still ideas in your head. But, no, we haven't seen it, but we've seen something happen, and so we made this idea up. 
And basically, uh, you go through the Big Bang Theory, and there's dozens of these issues where I just made this idea up. You know, so it, the thing is, you can still believe in the Big Bang Theory, you know, and we can still argue that in a friendly way, but uh, should that be science being taught on our tax dollar in the public school? Right, and especially if it's a religious concept. In other words, it seems to me that in the beginning we had, uh, you know, the founding fathers and the people that wrote the Constitution put uh, the Bible and the Ten Commandments and prayer and uh, creation science into the schools and kept it in the schools for 200 years. And then we had these... Uh, People that don't like God, trying to get rid of God, they say, oh, no, we can't have God in the public schools. Let's kick him out, even though the founding fathers and the people that wrote the Constitution put God in there. They say, oh, well, we're going to take your religion out and put our religion in. Yeah, and, you know, the funny thing is, is that I think people get confused over separation of church and state with separation of Bible and state. I, You know, I'm, I'm reading uh, a little bit of Thomas Paine. Yeah, And he was the philosopher of the American Revolution. And a lot of people would classify him as secular. But as soon as I opened up, it was a big uh, presentation of the Old Testament, talking about why the monarchy of kings is wrong and why they wanted more limited government, you know. And that was his first idea, is to start, hey, let's have a Bible study. That, that was right. in their mind. Right. right. But now, here's what happens, is that one idea leads in a, into another. So when we talk about the Big Bang Theory, why is it important? To them, it's very important because um, it is the intellectual base of evolution. They yeah. needed a time period to make evolution sound more rational. Okay, for animals to switch into other animals, it takes a long, long time. So then they said, okay, well, let's have a theory that will have the universe that will be very long to make up for those animals, because if the Big Bang Theory is not scientific, then you're probably, and I mean atheists would probably admit this, then you're probably not going to have a good case that evolution is scientific. Well, now this is, uh, the Big Bang is being taught in um, the public schools with Common Core. Yes, and it's being taught as fact because evolution is a fact, so therefore Big Bang Theory has to be a fact. It can't be just an idea. A theory. Yeah. Yeah. It has to be factual. You know, it has right. to be history. But history is things that we see and observe. Or at least there's so, some evidence for Yeah. It. Somebody was there is yeah. how we know. You yeah. know, but now it's nobody has to be there. We just have to get on a chalkboard and write out a theory. Well, then the other thing is you have this whole idea of the Cambian explosion mm -hmm. where all of these uh, life forms appeared. Boom, like all of a sudden yeah. in a uh, in the fossil record, and the fossil record does not contain any of the intermediate forms that Darwin himself said had to be there or else his theory was no good. Well, here's what's funny to me about that. <clears throat> you can dig anywhere on the earth, okay? And when we talk about the geologic column, which is where yeah. we talk about that idea, uh, you'll never find an exact replica of it. Uh, it would be a hundred miles deep, and we've only found the order of those, you know, types of earth found in two places that I know of. One was like in Nebraska, and one was in maybe it was like Dakotas or something, and then one was in China. But basically, they're only like about a mile deep. Okay. Now, when we talk about the Precambrian explosion, you have all these different species of animals that we know died. Okay. And my thing is that. You know, could this have been them all dying in a catastrophic event? Like Noah's Flood. Yeah. And I've written on that in other places and stuff, and people can contact me about that. Because I, I do have all my research in different articles I've written and stuff. But, uh, yeah, you see, all these things are, these theories develop the religion of humanism. And so once you get Big Bang Theory, then evolution, then you can start to deal with ideas like socialism yeah. and psychology. And, no right and wrong, no absolute. Yeah, and let me say, let me say when I say psychology, there's nothing wrong with analyzing the mind and analyzing problems. But when we talk about you know people getting more into a worldview, 
you know, when I talk about psychology as a worldview and that I'm okay and it's all my parents' problems and yeah, all these society's problems. Yeah, when you get into that philosophy, you start to see where this religion becomes fully fledged. And yeah. so it, it all starts right here because this is totally uh, religious. Um, now, a humanist could have different aspects to them. Yeah. But uh, when we talk about humanism, you have to remember that the philosopher behind the modern American public school, his name was John Dewey. You might remember the Dewey Decimal System. Well, John Dewey not only was the philosopher behind our public schools, he was also a co-signer or of uh, a founding co-signer of the Humanist Manifesto, which is the official creed of the humanists. And humanism is the religious term for atheist. Atheism is a philosophy, but the humanist is the religious, secular humanism is the religious term. And they had to do that back in the beginning because they wanted rights as religion for their religious liberty. So they right. had to admit who they were. But now they say, no, no, we're not a religion. But if you're not a religion, then you shouldn't have religious liberty. Right, right. You shouldn't have tax exemption and all that. Yeah, in, in other words, like, you know, because what they want to do to us is they want to say, we're going to push everybody into science, which is their humanistic philosophy. And then they'll say, hey, but we're just doing science. It's not religion. But well, that's like I say, to me, it seems to that the humanists got a power and authority and got their people on the Supreme Court and said, we're going to get rid of your religion and we're going to put our religion into the public schools and teach children our religion and indoctrinate them into our religion, which is uh, no absolutes, get rid of prayer, get rid of God, get rid of the Ten Commandments, get rid of the Bible and uh, get rid of creation science and just teach our atheistic or humanistic religion. It, uh, it's called a religion. bait and switch argument. And what they do is they change the definitions on you. Okay. And so this is how they've developed this idea to say, we're going to make the government atheist. Yeah. When, you know, our constitution is theistic. It, it, it says we have these rights because of our creator. Yeah. So once we destroyed that idea by making the whole government atheist, then we say the government needs to buy up everything. Yeah. You know? Right. Right. <laughs> and uh, you know they tax you and me and our listeners and take that tax money and indoctrinate our children into their religion. And let me let me go a couple steps from where I was going. You have the psychology now as part of the government. Yeah. Okay. And there's a lot of religious concepts in psychology, but that should be another episode. But basically, um, after psychology, then we start to deal with sexuality. Yeah. Okay. And so the foundation of these new movements, okay, the gay rights movement and all that kind of stuff, is based on psychology. And the psychology is based on evolution. And the evolution is based on Big Bang Theory. So because... We think they're, they're probably having a religious humanist agenda, okay? They're going to fight this tooth and nail. But if we're talking about the truth, if we really want to know the truth, then it does not belong in our public schools. We should not have to pay to teach our children right. what we do not believe. Now, the other thing that I think is important about the theory of evolution is that it teaches that life developed from non-life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Pasteur, a long time ago, did experiments and proved once and for all that life never comes from non-life. In other words, if you go out here and get some mud and sterilize it so there's nothing living in there, and uh, it's not going to develop more life out of that unless some, you know, germs drop down out of the air or something. So, uh, and, and, you know, the more people have studied microbiology, uh, when we start to realize that a, an average cell could have as many as a one trillion parts. Right. Okay. Right. They just have to all mix up just right. Okay. You see, what's insane is that our politics, our philosophy now is environmentalism, which yeah. would go along with that evolutionary idea that we came from rocks, that we came from nothing. Yeah. So then we should have the right, we should have less rights than the earth. And so what are they doing? They're saying, oh, well, you wanted to have a successful business and get your family out of poverty. Eh, eh. 
No, no. The dirt is better than you. How dare you? Okay. What you wanted to get energy and make it cheap and help out, you know, all sorts of like towns and cities and stuff. Eh, eh, because that's going to ruin the permafrost up yeah. in Canada, right? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there it goes. What's going on? Are you going to be voting for the people that are pushing uh, Common Core and the Big Bang and uh, all of this uh, new religion? They, You know, Phyllis Schlafly once said, the new morality is the old immorality. Yeah. And, you know, we, we've got to really think about this when we start talking about, as we said, the Constitution was Bible-believing, right. God-believing at the time. Yeah. And basically, look at the actions, okay? Uh, I'll be honest with you. Look at Jack Conway, all right? When we came before Jack Conway about the whole issue of uh, health care, yeah. you know, we said, it's not constitutional, Jack. You shouldn't force people to buy something. Right. And we know what's happened. We know how many of you out there, okay, the millions of people who've lost their health insurance, whose health is being who's struggling right now, in Kentucky, Jack Conway said, no, I'm not messing with it. Okay. He told us, no, that's, that's not what's going to go on. When we talk about this issue of marriage, when our state constitution said it, it still says it, okay, it defined marriage. And if you understand the 10th Amendment, Okay, it was not the federal government's right to tell us. Yeah. Then the Supreme Court is part of the federal government. Okay? Yeah, right. It was not their right to dictate to us something that was not in the Bill of Rights. We had the right to make that law. And uh, basically, they didn't even make a law. They just decided that our law was wrong. And, you know, before that, Jack said, crying, that he would never, ever do that, that he would never enforce the state constitution. So he decided, I'm going to break our Constitution. Right. And then what happens right afterwards? He said, anybody, anybody will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law, okay, as soon as it's switched over. He, he does not care about the power of the law, but when you look at their worldview, it seems obvious. No wonder he doesn't. Right. You know, that, that's right. just something somebody said. You, do, you know, who, he who dies with the best, most toys wins. You know, survival of the fittest. Uh, Conway has been strongly endorsed by the Homosexual PAC, Political Action Committee, which is a very powerful group. Mm. And uh, he's been strongly endorsed by them for years, not just this election, but when he was running before. So there's a lot of... Matt Bevan is a guy who is standing up on his own uh, principles against right. the system. Right. Okay. Um, He's not, a, it's not just that he's like, oh, well, he's just a Republican hack. No, he's already proven by his actions that he stands up independently and will even get after a Republican if they are, you know, that's right. not doing it right. So that, that's the whole thing is he's just a guy who's representing other people like us on these issues. You know, uh, Matt Bevan is on the board of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary Foundation. Mm. He has, supported the the seminary quite a bit. He uh and a lot of people from seminary do love him and care about him and stuff. Um basically he he, he does believe in God, he believes in Jesus Christ. He he knows his Bible. I think I've seen him preach a sermon or two. Yeah. And um you know um he he's he's a very interesting man. Um a lot of times people they they like to invoke race in the conversation and stuff. Yeah. Well, you know, he's a adopted um Many kids oh, on top of the many kids that's he already has. Tremendous, yeah. Yeah. And uh many of them are um uh, you know, dark skinned and stuff like that. And of course Matt Bevan's been in the military. So uh I think we're getting a little short on time, but uh this is really an important uh you know, we've been talking about Common Core. I have papers here that say Common Core is promoting Islam in our public schools, mm -hmm. again, with our tax money. Yeah. So uh, it's very important way, and I want to thank Matt Bevan. God bless you. Matt Appreciate you. <laughs> Matt Singleton. <laughs> Let me make one You're statement. You're next Matt Bevan, too. I do want to make one statement, though. Just remember, uh, even though I don't believe in the Big Bang Theory, my argument is not about necessarily if you agree or disagree with me. It's about 
what they're doing in the public schools to shape people's minds right. and putting those things. Those are things that I think that we can all talk about and go into universities and stuff. It's a good conversation there. But uh, we do have to be careful about who is teaching our children what. Absolutely. God bless you and tune in again next week for the rest of the news. City'd rise again after three days. You will lose peace and order if it's true. Will the people believe it? The weak will. There will be no other gods. Kill him. The tomb is sealed, guarded with your life. Tribune, pilot summons you. The body has vanished. His tomb is empty. Where has he gone? You tell me. Already they are proclaiming him risen from death. The Emperor will not arrive to unrest. We must find a body. Oh, no! Come the city for bodies dead in the last week. Take them up. Everyone. His disciples. Where are they hiding his corpse? It was not his followers. Another body, sir. Just revealed. No. Who told you the Nazarene was alive? Mary Magdalene. You're looking for something you'll never find. Open your heart and see. No more lies. What happened to the body? The ropes, they just exploded. You should have returned by now. I have seen two things which cannot reconcile. A man dead without question. And that same man alive again. What frightens you? Being wrong.